What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to Unbound Book One Dissonance by Nikolai Ganella. Chapter Four Felix's head rocked back, his smile faltering. A memory from that tentacled horror? He shuddered, and he didn't have a choice. Taking a deep breath, he looked around the beach and didn't see anything nearby for at least a mile on the open sands. Before he could think too much about it, he mentally selected yes. Everything went dark. Slowly, the world lightened until Felix was surrounded by a green murkiness that reminded him uncomfortably of the bitter sea. Nearby, a dim light played across the waters, shining from between blocky shadows. His body spun closer, moving in the way that Felix only offhandedly thought as strange. The rest of his attention was on the strange crimson light emanating from between several columns of hexagonal basalt. They rose up from the murky sea floor, rising up and around the bloody light like a cupped hand or a copse of creepy trees or a cage. Felix tried to move closer, but quickly realized he wasn't in control of his body. It felt bloated and ungainly, too big and too squishy somehow. He blinked, and blinked, and kept on blinking, set after set of eyes that seemed to wrap around his massive skull, eyes that were now just taking in the mottled color of fleshy tentacles coiling in the acidic water. A dark presence swam in the currents beneath him, just out of sight. Then, with a sickening lurch, the presence oriented on him. Tentacles coiled, and the eyes of the creature focused inward as pressure gathered on his mind. With mounting horror, Felix realized he was embodied within the dread itself, and somehow it had noticed him. Gah! Soaked with sweat and face first on the gray sand, Felix's heart thrummed heavy in his chest. His adrenaline was racing in his veins, even as he leaped to his feet and took quick glances in all directions. He was still alone, the expanse of gray beach and dull green water, quiet and still. Soft lapping of the foaming edge of the bitter sea washed a dozen feet away, and Felix shuddered. He climbed back into his cocoon of rocks. That was awful. Felix shook his head as he sat down heavily. His adrenaline rush was wearing off, leaving him shaky, his limbs all elbows and knees. If that was what happened every time he reviewed a memory... Then he'd take a hard pass in the future. As long as I can, he amended. Lessons of the past is level two. With the final steadying breath, Felix braced for more notifications, but no more appeared. Took long enough, he muttered. Now what? The beach was silent. The soft whoosh of water and bitter tang of vinegar permeating the air. He had been thrust into this strange place, dropped into deathly danger, and accosted with changes to everything about himself. Felix shook his head, trying to get a grip. The wor this world was like a game, so did that mean he was a player? Where were the others? First things first, he muttered. He needed more information. Menu, he tried. Nothing. Status? Nothing. Just a gray beach and green water. Undeterred, Felix tried to visualize what he wanted, Quickly, a blue screen appeared before his eyes. Name, Felix Navarre. Level, 2. Race, Nim. Omen, the Magician. Born Trait, Keen Mind. Health, 28 out of 35. Stamina, 36 out of 36. Mana, 51 out of 51. Strength, 2. Vitality, 7. Intelligence, 13. Agility, 3. Perception, 5. Endurance, 7. Will, 9. Dexterity, 5. Skills. Acid Resistance, Common, Level 4. Analyze, Common, Level 1. Lessons of the Past, Rare, Level 2. Titles. Gourmand, plus 1 Intelligence and Wisdom. Survivor, plus 1 Endurance and Vitality. Unused Stat Points, 5. Whoa, cool. Excitement stirred in his chest again. He had stats, skills, and mana. This was wild beyond belief. Now, if it weren't for all the life-threatening danger, 
His leg and arm still twinged painfully in reminder, and Felix noticed that his health was sitting at 28 out of 35. It didn't seem to be getting worse, which was good, but he needed to find a way to heal, one thing at a time. His stats appeared to govern his physical and mental abilities, and he looked to have started kinda low. Were these low? He had no idea what the average was. His highest stat by far was intelligence at 13, thanks to his race, omen, born trait, and gourmand title. He wasn't sure what intelligence affected, but it was a safe bet that it had to do with magic. Did it also make him smarter? Felix couldn't tell. Next up was willpower, another mental stat that might have something to do with magic. The rest, aside from his strength and agility, which were abysmal, were all middling. His, he eyeballed his unused stat points. His race garnered him a huge amount of these, enough to up all of his stats by one per level, if he wished. If he included the other stat bumps, he also gained from leveling up. Felix had no idea if the Nim race was amazing, or if this was a normal amount of bonus points per level, but he was feeling that it was on the large side. In fact, the whole deal of his race and omen being pre-chosen seemed suspect and raised more questions than ever. Felix frowned and pursued his memories of the last half hour. His perfect recall showed its power here, bringing forth a seemingly flawless recreation of events. He had put a great deal of focus on it, and his head felt like it was simultaneously splitting and overheating, if he concentrated for too long, but it truly seemed perfect, at least up until the point where he selected Keen Mind as his born trait. Before that moment, Felix could only rely on his natural memory. Was his normal memory improved as well? Was that an effect of a higher intelligence? He flinched at his improved memory, or as his improved memory touched on the edges of the Dreads memory again. The headache flared into full force, and Felix shut it down in a hurry. He shuddered and reoriented. Inventory. Map, he tried, visualizing them to come up. Settings. Nothing worked. He had a status page, and that was it. Felix grumbled in frustration. The sun, now risen above the horizon, was beating down on him with increasing intensity. He stood from his tiny fortress and walked towards the shade of the tree line, carefully eyeing shadows for anything that might try to kill him. The dread taught him an important lesson, at least. The vegetation was temperate, reminding him of the northeast coastline of America. The air had a mild heat to it, reminding Felix of early spring, or maybe early summer, if this was further from the equ equator than Florida. Its own equator, of course. Felix shook his head. Another freaking world. Scrub and thin trees dotted the sandy soil as it built towards a heavier growth further up in a small incline. As he walked, his eyes were gradually drawn to small flowering plants near the trunk of a hardy-looking shrub. They had pale blue flowers, bright red stamen. Without conscious thought, he felt his analyze skill activate. Name. Blue Herabor. Lore. Praised for its beauty, the blossom of the blue Haribor is well known as a soporific. Felix smiled, surprised. Cool. The next hour found Felix trudging deeper into the woods, analyzing everything he could see. More than anything, he needed information. Where was he? How did he get here? Was there anything close to civilization nearby? After what had to be four miles of arduous forest walking, Felix didn't feel he was any closer to any answers. His feet and calves were sore, his leg and arm still aching from the dread, and his mouth dry. His analyze skill, however, was doing fine. Name, Velbor tree. Lore, a silver-barked tree in the Hesidae family, known to flower only when it rains. Properties unknown. Alchemical properties unknown. Analyze is level 7. Felix rubbed his eyes, a slight headache simmering behind them. He had been analyzing everything he could, and the information displayed was getting more detailed. The lore entry in particular had begun to drop large words in an unknown language, like this world's version of Latin. Hopefully by level 10 he would start to see some of the properties that were unknown, but that was just a guess. Anything beyond a dozen feet couldn't be targeted by the skill, 
so Felix ended up meandering as he found various plants that seemed interesting. He had cataloged 22 different flowers, four types of moss, nine trees, and one slow-moving slug the size of his forearm. Name, Rock Slug. Common. Type, Invertebrate. Level 20. HP, question mark, question mark, question mark. MP, question mark, question mark, question mark. Lore, a slug known for its highly potent acid, used primarily to digest calcium deposits. It was busy, slowly eating through a rock. He made a wide berth around that one just to be safe. The wildest part? If he chose to, he could remember everything that happened today as if he were reliving it. All of those flowers, mosses, and trees were crystal clear in his mind, as for the dull green undergrowth beneath his feet. For instance, during the second hour, he had found a broken branch of a lucana tree. Its wrist-thick wood, a pale brown, swirled with deeper emerald tones. He knocked the small branches off as best he could and made a passable walking stick. He even learned a new skill for that one. You have learned a new skill. Improvisation. Common. Level 1. The ability to make what is available useful. Great for a poor crafter or a homeless vagrant. Felix's eyebrow twitched at the memory. There was a certain level of snark in that skill description. It made him question whether this system was being controlled, or if it was just omniscient with sass. He wasn't sure which unnerved him more. He also found a very useful herb. Small and white, they grew in bundles in shadier nooks of the forest floor. They kind of reminded Felix of Queen Anne's Lace, but with bigger petals. Name, Yarrow. Lore, commonly used in poultices to engage healing and stop bleeding. Can be eaten raw for lesser effects. Properties, plus one health per second for five seconds. And bleeding status, alchemical properties unknown. There were seven flowers in total, and he tried one of them. You have ingested yarrow, plus one health per second for five seconds. In the next five seconds, Felix's leg and arm finally felt like new. He looked down at them in amazement. Whoa. He wasted no time in taking the rest. Without another option, he put them in his jeans pocket and hoped they wouldn't be ruined if it turned out he needed them again. Despite all that, he was still wandering around the woods with zero direction. He had been orienting himself based on the rising sun, but the canopy had quickly grown too dense to see it much of the time. All he could manage was to head in the opposite direction of the weird, bitter sea. When Felix began to hear something new. Birdsong. Chorusing insects. Even the small patter of tiny lizard feet on a branch above. Now the sounds of life returned all around him, each bringing more to his eyes and ears. Even the greenery was more vibrant with deep with deeper greens and more robust flowers. The closer I am to the bitter sea, the less signs of life there are. Is that because of the dread? It made sense. Maybe it was an apex predator or something that scared everything away. The sway of a small branch nearby made him swivel towards a new arrival, a rodent the size of a house cat that fixed him with small beady eyes. It rotated a leaf like root vegetable quickly in its paws, gnawing at it with startling speed. Analyze. Name, Trevol. Type, Beast. Level 23. HP, question mark, question mark, question mark. MP, question mark, question mark, question mark. Lore, a small mammal of the Phalandesii family, noted for its sharp claws with which channel mana to pierce even the strongest bark. Damn, he paused, pursing his lips. Even the rodents here are higher level than I am. Despite its size, Felix assumed those mana claws would do a number on his weak frame. He wasn't even wearing armor, just his increasingly uncomfortable dress shirt and jeans. The squid had ripped up one of the legs, and the acidic seawater ate away at the rest of it. Now that it was drying, and Felix was positive it was going to crust away into pieces at any moment. As he stepped back, the vole scurried away in a quick flash. Holy dang, that thing was fast. Felix kept going, at first attempting to skirt around any decently sized creatures in fear that he would be attacked. Everything looked so different than he was used to. The animals were larger and had intimidating claws or teeth or scales. 
But after 20 minutes or so of zero attacks, and even witnessing several smaller creatures fleeing at his approach, Felix started to feel a little more comfortable. Maybe this place isn't too bad. I mean, they can't all be like the Dread, right? As he walked, he kept analyzing anything new in sight, trying to raise the level of the only actionable skill he had. He was pretty sure he learned to analyze by attempting to figure out the dread, but no matter how many times he awkwardly attempted a high kick, he never saw any notifications. No super kick skill was for him. Was there a set skill list? Did he just so happen to make the right eye movement to unlock analyze? What about this acid resistance and lessons of the past? Both of those were definitely the result of his actions, idiotic as they were. He still couldn't believe that he bit a giant squid monster. Felix was chuckling to himself when a sudden humming approached him. Looking up, he saw the strangest thing yet. A teal and yellow lizard hovered ten feet away from him, the blur of four dragonfly-like wings holding it aloft and producing the oddly pitched humming noise. Almost without thinking, Felix activated Analyze. Name, Sharpwing Skink. Type, Reptile. Level, 23. HP, question mark, question mark, question mark. MP, question mark, question mark, question mark. Lore, highly territorial reptiles with four razor-sharp wings. A grotesque gurgle snapped his attention away from the notification window, just as a wad of greenish goo splattered against his chest and knocked him on his ass. The goo immediately began to sizzle, eating through his tattered shirt and straight into his skin. Acid resistance is level 5. Acid resistance is level 6. Ow, ow, shit! Felix immediately made to roll into the loamy soil, hoping to scrape the acid from his chest. Doing so, he just barely managed to dodge the sharp-wing skink as it literally buzzed him. The blur of the acid fell away once he'd scraped off enough of it, and Felix got to his feet in a crouch. He readied his walking stick like a baseball bat, not really sure what he could do to a monster that was over 20 levels higher than him. But he had nowhere to run, not really, and he was sick and tired of things attacking him and getting away with it. The skink buzzed at him again, its mouth wide and open and filled with dozens of tiny triangular teeth. It was so fast that Felix only had a bare instant to line up his shot, and he swung as hard as he could. The overgrown lizard bobbed nimbly out of the path of his clumsy stick, zipping up and around a nearby velbor tree. Before Felix could even register that he'd missed, the skink slammed into his back and put him on the ground. You have taken a critical hit. Your health has dropped below 10%. Back and shirt shredded. Felix shook his head, dismissing more blinking notifications. The pain was overwhelming him. First his chest and now his back was a sea of fire, scorching every nerve ending and fogging his mind. Barely able to think, he quickly dumped all five bonus stats into willpower, doing nothing for the pain but immediately clearing his head. He pushed down the agony but got shakily to his feet. Breathing carefully, Felix tried to listen for the dumb lizard. A distant humming emanated from the trees to the northeast. And without wasting any time on thinking, he dove forward in a roll. A sharp, rising buzz zipped past him, just barely missing his head. Cursing, Felix did something he should have done in the first place. He ran. He scrambled behind a nearby tree, just in time to hear the gurgle hiss splorch of another acid spit landing. Felix smelled acrid smoke, but didn't look back. The humming grew in pitch and volume and he put everything he had into running as fast as he could, zigging through trees and hoping to avoid any more of the acid. He wasn't sure how long he ran. All he knew was that his lungs burned with each breath, and his legs shrieked with pain as he pushed himself through the forest. By the end, his vision dimmed and blackened around the edges. He simply collapsed into a patch of weeds and wildflowers, folding his arms feebly over his head. After a few minutes of just breathing and no attack, he strained his senses. It was quiet. He let out a shaky breath. He'd lost it. A small yellow icon flashed in his vision, and Felix remembered all the notifications he, igno he had ignored during his fight. He toggled them on. Warning, your stamina has been depleted. Current stamina, 2 out of 36. Whoa. No wonder he collapsed. It must have hit zero during his escape. He was lucky the sharp-winged skink had given up, or else he'd be a bloody smear against some tree. 
What did the lore say again? They were highly territorial. So once he had left its claimed area, it dropped the chase. Felix sat up, propping himself against a nearby stump. Careful of his wounded back, he watched his stamina tick down from tick down to one out of thirty-six at this simple action, and a wave of weakness passed through his arms and legs. He had to fix that somehow. You have gained a title. Survivor 2. Uncommon. Drop to less than 5% health twice within 24 hours. Plus 1 endurance, plus 2 vitality. Felix's eyes went wide and he quickly accessed his health. Warning, your health is below 10%. You are bleeding. Health, 2 out of 45. Felix could feel the blood pooling behind him, oozing out of his torn-up back. That lizard had diced him up. He was amazed he hadn't fainted from the pain, and equally amazed that his desperate decision to dump all three points into willpower had paid off. He could feel the pain, but it seemed more distant now. Straining his remaining stamina, Felix fumbled into his pockets and grabbed the yarrow flowers he'd stored there. They were crumpled and torn, but hopefully still good. He shoved flower after flower into his mouth. They tasted bitter, sharp, and almost hot on his tongue. He chewed mechanically and swallowed, moving fast as his stamina allowed. Then he got the blessed notification. Your bleeding has stopped. You've ingested Yarrow times six. Six plus six health per second for five seconds. You have learned a new skill. Herbalism, common, level one. Increases knowledge, accumulation, and retention regarding roots, herbs, and natural remedies. Efficiency of gathered herbs, roots, and natural and other natural growths increased with skill level. A strange squirming sensation crawled along Felix's back as if his skin was rippling. It itched like hell, too. Felix toggled his health to see the result. Health, 31 of 45. Felix let his head drop to the dirt and took several big shuddering breaths. He had almost died, again. He had more notifications and wasn't doing anything except slowly recovering. He toggled them back on. You have learned new skills. Staff Mastery, common, level 1. You began your path towards the mastery of the staff. Proficiency increases with skill level. Dodge, common, level 1. The best way to not get hurt is to not get hit. Efficiency from agility increased slightly per level. Acrobatics, uncommon, level 1. You've proven yourself capable of tumbling into and out of danger. Sense of balance increases slightly with skill level. Flexibility increases moderately with skill level. Analyze is level 10. You have gained a title. Natural Scholar. 1. Uncommon. You have analyzed over 500 different species. Move ever onward, Scholar. Plus 1 Intelligence. Plus 1 Perception. Due to your efforts, you have gained plus 1 Strength. Plus 1 Agility. Plus 2 Endurance. Plus 1 Perception. Felix bl blinked, surprised at the flood of screens. All this from a 30-second fight that he had lost. What would have happened if he had won? And that is the end of Chapter 4. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have fun, guys.